saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me the word, that I too may come and worship him. When they had, when they had heard the king, they went their way, and behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy, and going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And, they, and being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. We have come from the east to worship the king. God is good. And all the time. Today is the epiphany of our Lord. What do we understand by the epiphany? It's all about the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, for all these days, maybe even before the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, we've heard the angel come to Mary to proclaim that a child will be born, and this child will be given a name, Emmanuel, that is clearly understood to be God with us, God who continues living with us, God who continues walking side by side with us in all our trials and all our difficulties. And I think today God is revealing himself to us through the three wise men. Look at the gospel today. Christ is teaching us how if you bring your heart to him, he enriches you with all his blessings, with all the things you ask of him. The celebration today brings about how Jesus Christ is revealed all has manifested his glory to the world through the presence of these three wise men. And I think the three wise men represent a number of races, the blacks, the Europeans, the Asians. And I think God wants to show us the way we've heard in the second reading, Paul convincing the Gentiles we are all heirs to this kingdom. We are all part of this salvation. God has planned that each of us should be saved, and this salvation should come through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we go further and look at the gifts offered by this Magi, the gifts of frankincense, gold, and ma, maybe what do they mean? Gold, they want to emphasize or they want to bring up a reference that who, the person to whom they are going to adore is the king. Christ becomes the king of our lives. There is no other king. There is no body greater than Christ. So Christ becomes the king of kings, and that's why the three wise men move from far east to come and worship this king. Frankincense, we all know, even the birth of Jesus was mysterious. A virgin became pregnant, and she bore a kid, and this kid was a man. So with the frankincense, I think, the gospel wants to bring out the aspect that the child who is born is not only a human, but he is a son of God. He is our savior and redeemer. And Ma, 
in reference to the humanity of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, though he was in the form of God, he empties himself and becomes like us in our human flesh, in our own weaknesses. So and I think God wants to bridge the gap that existed in the past. God wants us to know that he is near to us than never before. So maybe our gifts today might be different from those of the Magi. Our gifts might not be gold, might not be frankincense, they might not be ma but God is asking us, these gifts might be in a form of conversion. What are you letting go as we celebrate the Pithani? What are you struggling with Christ is asking us, maybe you've been struggling with forgiveness. Today, let the gift you are bringing to this born child be forgiveness. Forgive those who have hurt you. Let go of all the hunger, the jealousy, the hatred that is within your heart. Christ wants us to offer conversion to those we think we can let, we cannot let go. And I think the number of gifts you can think of, forgiveness, patience, you know, reconciliation, love, and maybe support of the needy. These are the gifts we can replace with the gifts of the three wise men. Since we don't have the gold, we don't have the frankincense and the ma, then we can think of maybe offering patience, reconciliation, love, and help to the needy. And maybe another aspect from the gospel again, these guys were led by the star. Maybe several times we've acted contrary to what the society thinks of us. Several times we've gone short of God's graces and mercy. Maybe several times we have misled the people who believe in us. And I think today the readings are speaking to each one of us. Let's be the star that guides. Let's be the star that unites. Let's be the star that leads people to the presence of Christ. Let's be that star that no matter the challenges we face, we stand firm and believe that Jesus Christ is and will always be the Emmanuel, the God who will always be with us, the God who will always stand by us, but how is this God going to be with us if we don't open our hearts? How is this God going to be with us if we are full of all these evil thoughts? How is this God going to be with us if we have failed to let go? How is God going to dwell among us if we fail to convert from all these things, these things we keep on doing? And I think like the wise men, the time they chose not to take the same route is the same thing God is asking us through the scriptures. God does not want us to take the route we've been taking. God wants us to change the way we have been behaving. God wants us to be patient with one another. God wants us to be forgiving to one another. And God wants us to do a little bit of charity, a little bit of abstinence, maybe from proud and just thoughts. And maybe this is the only way we are going to lead people back to Christ. In fact, when we look at the worshiping of these magi, it fulfills what we have read in the first reading that the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. How has the glory of the Lord risen upon you? It has risen upon us when these people are traveling from far east to come and show, no matter how many kings we are bypassing, Herod and all these people who want to kill this born child, we still have our savior who we are searching to adore or worship, meaning that Christ becomes the center of our lives. Maybe how many times has Christ become the center of our lives? How many times 
can we hold on to Christ even in times of difficulties? Do you have the courage of St. Paul? Like, if we pray to Christ the first time and Christ does not answer our prayers, we pray the second time, the third time, Christ is not answering our prayers. Do you have the confidence Paul has to say, three times I prayed to the Lord, but the Lord did not answer my prayer. But this did not let me go away from Christ because I knew God's plans are different from mine. And I think this is what gives us courage, that it's only faith which makes us hope for the things we've not seen. It's only by faith we can assume and manifest the glory of Jesus Christ to the rest of humanity. It's only by faith we can give respect to each one of us. It's only by faith that we have the confidence to let go and bring these gifts that we want to offer to God as we celebrate the epiphany of the Lord. So maybe our prayer today will ask God to give us the grace to let go of the things that are still hindering us from moving on, to let go of the people who have hurt us. We ask God to send us the grace to increase our faith, to believe that a man is not just one time aspect. A man the God who is with us, is always with us, is always journeying with us, is always with us, whether we are in joyful moments, whether we are happy, whether we are sad, God is always God, and Jesus Christ, we always remain Jesus Christ. So we ask God to give us that courage, to give us the graces to believe that in any moments of our lives, Emmanuel is still God with us, and this God who keeps on manifesting himself in all our aspects of life. The Lord be with you. I believe in one God. Gathered here, we share a living tradition, a glorious promise for the light of Christ continues to shine for all people. Let us pray for men and women of all languages, races, and cultures. For the Holy Catholic Church, that she may welcome all who seek peace and truth in her fold. Let us pray to the Lord. For all the nations 
of a world in darkness, that their leaders may be drawn into the dawning of brightness of Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For a universal charity that all bigotry, narrowness, and racism may be driven from our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. For a spirit of humble worship in our own lives, that we may adore Jesus in the Eucharist with devotion of the Magi who brought gifts, let us pray to the Lord. For our sick, the bereaved, and special projects, let us pray to the Lord. For all the souls of the faithfully departed, that eternal light may shine upon them, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God and Father, your Son is light from light, your glowing sign of all nations. As we pray for the peoples of your world, help us to strengthen the bonds of unity through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church in which are offered now not gold or frankincense of man, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Our is and every year to give you thanks, Lord, our Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you've revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a life for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the God of easy mortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit to graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Keep in mind. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the blood and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with the elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, patron of our parish, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O oh Lord, we pray, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity. Your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Philip Agnola, Archbishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Gladys, and to all whom were pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unit of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe eternal life. Prayer before communion. O oh my God. I firmly believe that you are truly present in the God of Eucharist. I confess that I am a sinner and I am not worthy to receive you. But do you say the word and I shall be healed and then I can receive you into my soul. I am sorry for all my sins because they have offended you and I resolve never to commit them again. Have mercy and forgive me, Lord. I desire to receive you. Come into my bosom and make my heart about. Amen.
prayer after communion. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, run through my veins. Water flowing from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me not be separated from you. From the evil enemy, defend me. At the hour of death, call me and bid me to come to you. That with your sins, I may praise you for all eternity. We have seen his star in the east and have come with gifts to adore the Lord. Let us pray. Go before us with the heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. God is good. God is good. And all the time. Welcome to our announcements on the solemnity of Epiphany of the Lord, Year A. We welcome all from all the Christmas festivities and look forward to a blessed year ahead. Today is our tithe contribution day at 10% for the month of December. Let us all be generous to build the Church of Christ here on earth. Marriage announcement between Michael Munene Mugo, son of Joseph Mugo and Janet Mugo. He intends to marry Anne Wangoi Mumbi, daughter of Pauline Mumbi. Their marriage ceremony will be held here on 3rd of February, 2023. Anyone with any objection should inform the father in church. This is the first notice. We welcome all new members who have joined our parish. To help us know you and serve you better, we request you to register yourself by filling a registration form which will be found at the nursing mother's tent outside the church. Registration for adult catechism is going on. Adults wishing, willing to undertake catechism <coughs> classes and those willing to be received officially into the Catholic Church are requested to register in the catechist's office. We thank all those who animated Mass last Sunday. <coughs> Mass animation for coming Sunday, 15th of January, will be as follows. 7 a.m., First Mass Families. 9 a.m., 
lay camelites, 11 a.m. lay incarnate, and 5 p.m. MYM. Lastly, we have a special announcement from the PMC and youth groups, which will be done by Ms. Helen. God is good, and all the time. Okay. I'm here on behalf of all the children, youth, and young adult groups. Uh, Proverbs 22, 6 tells us, teach children how they should live, and they will remember it all their lives. The parish, through pontifical missionary societies, supports the spiritual development of our children from when they're very young until they become young professionals. These groups are PMC for primary school goers, MYM for secondary school teens, YCS for college going youth, and YCA for young professionals. We will run a registration and information drive for all children, youth, and young adults in all the masses next Sunday, 15th of January. Please ensure your children are registered in their, respective, in their respective groups so that the parish can impact their spiritual growth. It will also be a perfect opportunity for you and your children to get more information on the various groups and the activities they're involved in. This includes altar servers, liturgical dancers, and the junior choir. We began this announcement by quoting Proverbs. Train up a child the way he should go, and he will not depart from it. There's also an addendum applied to this verse that says, train up a child the way he should go, but be sure you go that way yourself. Thank you, and have a blessed Sunday. We'll now have the time. Heavenly Father, almighty and gracious God, we thank you for calling us to know you and to serve you. Receive glory and honor. Your word in Malachi 3.10 invites us to bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in your house, and prove you now herewith, and see if you will not open us the windows of heaven and pour down upon us blessings without measure. As we gather here in thy presence for worship, we recognize that everything we have and even our very lives belong to you. We thank you for your love, care, and providence. In appreciation for all that, we turn to you now with humility to offer back to you a portion of that what you have given us that you may bless and sanctify it. We come to you today to offer you our 10% as tithe and offerings, asking that you may bless them 
and bless us in return. Bless our jobs and businesses and everything we do to earn a living so that we may have enough for ourselves and for yourself. Accept what we offer you as a sacrifice of worship and a token of appreciation for your magnanimous love towards us, your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. God is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good all the time. After the celebration, let me tell you, all of you, you are looking good. So that means you ate well, you celebrated well, and you, you have come back to us safe. wote kwa makofi mazuri. I'm so happy to see you back. Our dear choir, we missed you. Welcome back. Our dear Christians, we know you went somewhere to celebrate with people. Welcome back. Let us embark into our business of serving God and serving the nation. That is our purpose. And make our relationship good always. Sawa sawa. Are we together? Are we together? Thank you. Today we have been graced by my classmate, Father Victor. I think I could have told you his name, but it's okay. He's my classmate. He has come to say hi to me after the celebration also. And I told him, you cannot say hi to me by just a hand. Come and say mass and bless the people of God in St. John. I was with him here, and now he's a priest. He's growing big, yeah? And he's looking good. Please come and say hi to them, and later you bless your people. My parish priest told me to say hi to you and to welcome you back officially. That work has started. May God bless your day. God is good, and all the time, I think he has said my name, Sam Victor Biaugaba. I'm currently working in Mulago, Kampala Diocese, but on transit, soon I'll be going to Papua New Guinea, Oceania. That's where my appointment is. Pleasure to be here, and pleasure to have mass with you, and may God bless you. The Lord be with you. Bow your head and receive God's blessings. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who to the appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, May God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star and whom they found with great joy the light from light who is Christ the Lord. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, the mass is
Jesus. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So, thank you everyone for coming.
Oh, yeah. 